having the Lord's Supper on the Sunday before Thanksgiving is very appropriate. So all of us have much for which to be thankful. I saw a cartoon once that I think puts, puts persecution in perspective. There are four panels or four scenes on this cartoon. In the first one, we see a New Testament Christian, a, a first century Christian in the early church, praying, Lord, give me the courage to face this accusing mob. And then in the next panel, there's a Reformation Christian praying, Lord, help me declare your truth despite the cost. In the next frame, there is a 20th century Christian from Iran praying, Lord, may we faithfully persevere under these burdens. And then finally, there's today's American Christian and they're praying, Lord, the car has been running rough lately. Can you help me? I don't think that cartoon is exactly fair. I believe that, that people of all, Christians of all ages have prayed for things that they needed in their lives. But it is true that we live in freedom. We are the free church, and too often we take that for granted. That's true. You already know my heart for the persecuted church. If you come to Northgate for any length of time, you know my heart there, and my heart is there. And I can't help but think how our brothers and sisters in Christ in the persecuted church would approach our problems. They would pray that they would have keys to their car to lose. They would pray that they would have food that could go bad. They would, they would pray that they would have a refrigerator that could break. I know how much they would approach problems and inconveniences like we face in our daily life. They would face them with immeasurable gratitude. I think they would be thankful beyond our imagination. Where they gather in fear and great danger simply to worship, we're often temporarily inconvenient. Baxter was telling you just a moment ago, this beautiful sanctuary, praise the Lord, is going to undergo renovation for about four months and we'll be meeting for worship in the fellowship hall. And at that time, the fellowship hall will be the sanctuary. It will be the place that we've set aside for the purposes of worship. And we'll look at it as the sanctuary. These comfortable, comfortable facilities in which we worship and the freedom that we enjoy are God-sized prayer requests for the persecuted church. But there is a common denominator that we share with all Christians, free or persecuted. There's a common denominator that we share. Joy. It doesn't matter whether we worship in a glorious sanctuary or in a cave in a forest. No one can take our joy in Christ from us. Amen. No one, no thing can take 
the joy that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ from us. The Lord's Supper is a reminder of the thanksgiving that Christians continually have in our hearts regarding our salvation and the grace that God has bestowed upon us regardless of our circumstances. The persecuted Christian in North Korea has joy in their heart because they have Christ in their heart. And the free Christian in North America has joy because we have Christ in our heart. And the Lord's Supper leads us into thanksgiving. We could not have this ordinance at a better time than on the Sunday before Thanksgiving. So as we receive the elements of the Lord's Supper this morning, let's be very mindful of the joy that we have in Christ. Joy that surpasses the circumstances in our lives. Joy that is from God. From the Holy Spirit. I like what Ruth shared with the children. Find some way on Thursday to share outward our thanksgiving. Ma, we have so much to be thankful for. Let's pray together. Father, we come in your presence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're thankful, dear God, that you so loved us that you gave your only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in Christ you've given to us not only eternal life, you've given to us abundant life. And that's to all believers of all ages in all places. Our Father, we give thanks this morning as we begin this Thanksgiving week. May we have thankful hearts. And may you open our eyes and open our minds to the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that while we live in this free society, we can share that good news and we can receive that good news without fear of persecution. God, thank you for your blessings. We pray this and all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. What a wonderful privilege we have to celebrate the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. It is the holiest time in the life of a Christian, the life of a church, to come to the Lord's table and to receive these elements which are reminders of Jesus Christ and how much He loves us. We don't do this every Sunday. We don't do it just once a year. We do it about four times a year. Because every few months or so, we need to be reminded of the cost of our salvation, the blessings of the great grace that God has bestowed upon us. On the night before His crucifixion, 
The Bible says in Matthew 26 and verse 26, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples. Let's pray together. Our Father, we are thankful that you so loved us that you would send even your only Son to die in our place, to take the punishment that we deserve. And you've taken that upon yourself. So that our punishment for sin is forgiven. And we are reconciled to you. And what a great, great gift that is. And oh, how thankful we are. For we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body. The Bible says, then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them. Let's pray. Our Father, we're so very thankful that you sent your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to receive the cup of your wrath for our sin. For Father, we are grateful that you provided the perfect sacrifice and the Lamb of God in the person of your Son, our Savior Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving us to the end. For we pray in Jesus. Amen.
me invite you to take just a moment and consider the cup, what it represents, the grace, the forgiveness for any and for all of our sin. Jesus said, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Amen. And when they had finished, they sang a hymn. Matthew is making his way up here to lead us in the, in the hymn. Would you stand? At the, at the door, and Batch is going to come and close us with prayer. So remember, the Blue family will be back there. Everybody greet them uh, and welcome them. Uh, and let's pray together, and we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you for your grace. Uh, Lord, we thank you for Jesus, uh, his body broken, his blood shed for our sins. And Lord, his righteous life lived and then given away to us so that we who deserve to die might live. Uh, and enjoy eternal life with you both now and forevermore. And so, Lord, we give you thanks for that, and we go out rejoicing and thanking you. Uh, Lord, bring that to our minds again and again in this week of Thanksgiving, uh, this greatest thing we have to be thankful for among all the other blessings that you've given to us. Lord, we give you thanks for this day and this time uh, and for all the blessings, uh, both here and spiritual, that you give to us. Lord, we lift all this up, and it's all to your honor and glory and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.